السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يهدي فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله uh, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone Uh, good to have you on here. Um, we've got a special guest that Khaled worked hard in the background uh, to join us today. Uh, we have with us Dr. Yusuf Abdul Jabbar, uh, who's joining us all the way from Medina. Um, there's a bit of bio that I will give you. Um, so, excuse me if my camera just turns off for a second while I look at my WhatsApp. But uh, Dr. Yusuf is an imam and public speaker who has studied under scholars in Medina and has taught classes in Masjid and Nabawi. Uh, he spent the last 15 years, uh, mashallah, in Saudi uh, seven in Medina, and is a lecturer and author specializing in leadership. He lectures at Knowledge International University in Riyadh and is a research scholar at the Ibn uh, Rashid Center of Excellence for Islamic Research in Birmingham. Uh, he's currently, as I mentioned, in Medina uh, and is the trainee advisor for the Academy of Masjid and Nabawi at Medina in uh, Saudi, alhamdulillah. So as you can see, we've got someone um, quite significant, uh, alhamdulillah, with us, uh, who's going to be talking about a very important topic of dua and it being a weapon for the believer. Um, before the talk kicks off, inshallah, as ever, and I'm sure Khalid has mentioned to you, please do your best to forward these links on to people that you think will benefit uh, from this session. Not only this session, but future ses sessions, inshallah. And keep an eye out on the links that we post on the WhatsApp group. If you're not on the WhatsApp group, let us know in the chat. And what we'll do is we will add the um, link to it. So we've got two channels. Uh, we regularly post them there regarding what's coming up for the next week or the following week. Um, so you get a heads up of exactly what we are going to do. And, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, sometimes we're, we're, on, we're, we're on it and we're, we do it in advance, but sometimes we're, we're a bit delayed. But just bear with us, inshallah. It's a, it's a, a two-man project at, at the moment. Um, but if I can um, ask you all to make sure that your microphones are muted when you enter. Uh, think about questions you want to ask as the session goes on. Make them relevant so our uh, dad can make sure he answers those questions that are on the topic. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll drop away now for half an hour, inshallah. Uh, let, let Dr. Yusuf uh, join us and speak about the topic. Uh, and then, inshallah, I will pick it up again in about half an hour. To so, uh, Ustad, can I pass the mic over to you, inshallah? No. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, we, thank, we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we send peace and blessings and salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we have uh, a special guest Muhammad Hamoudi um, I don't know how long he's going to last he said he's going to try to be here for the full duration um because it's dad's and son so i said do you want to come on he said oh, all right then he's got his notepad um probably a reminder for you lot at home uh make sure you're taking notes because you know you may not um it's always good to um what do you call this conceptualize concepts um when you write it down it reinforces the the information or the piece of knowledge inshallah i know there's going to be playback as well anyway um inshallah so our session today i hope the audio is okay and the video is okay if um if there is any significant lag because i am uh broadcasting live from medina hamoud is getting tired it is about 10 past 10 um and so if if it does get really choppy then we'll, we'll turn off the video but inshallah it usually we have good um connection so i hope you can hear me um audio is good inshallah alhamdulillah all good on our end all right good because yeah i am so i'm around where are we we're probably about driving wise probably about two to three minutes away from masjid quba you remember the first uh, masjid in islam to be built as the prophet وسلم, arrived um made the hijrah from mecca to medina so that's a few minutes drive from here, a couple of kilometers. And the Masjid Nabawi itself is, again, probably 10 to 12 minutes from here, alhamdulillah. So it's a blessing to be in, in this city 
um, by Allah's grace and through all your du'as, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, keep us here. And also everybody should make a du'a as we're doing du'as. All of you now make a du'a, make a niyyah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you residency here in Medina. Remember in the, in the, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of metaphorical, uh, nothing is uh, impossible. Everything is possible. Each and every one of you uh, could be living here by Allah's grace. So make a dua uh, that at least uh, intention that you wish to uh, visit often and you wish to make your home in the dunya in Medina, in this beautiful, blessed city. A city like no other. You know, it's a great, peaceful city. Those who have visited, you know the peace and tranquility. And often you have, the reward is more in Mecca, okay, no doubt. But the peace and tranquility is often found in Medina. It's very calm. Whereas in Mecca, it's very rugged, the hustle and bustle and the harshness of the Quraysh is still there, subhanAllah. Um, so our topic today, again, I'm not going to try to uh, lecture you. I'm going to remind you a few different um, things about dua and also a few stories, real stories, to try to motivate you. The power, when we say a weapon, you know, a weapon is like... Um, I was going to do my bow and arrow, you know, when, uh, did I, yeah, I did a bit of archery in Turkey. So prior to the year, um, uh, I've been here a year now for the second time in Medina, prior to that six years, alhamdulillah, and then a year in Turkey. And so we did used to do archery and horse riding, some of the sinna sports. You know, I'm thinking about an archery because, you know, the arrow, bow and arrow, and you hit the target. Um, and it, it is a weapon. It can be quite lethal when the instructor says, everyone stay back. Uh, and no one's allowed to, you know, draw the, um, uh, what do you call it, the arrow until everyone is behind the line because it's very deadly, you know, because if it's going to hit, it's going to do some damage. It's a, a weapon usually, it, it will protect you, okay? It will, it will um, save you from harm. It will protect you. It will be your defense mechanism. It could be your survival between um, life and death. Okay, so the dua, we said, a title we put here, the weapon of the believer, a secret weapon. It really is something amazing. And most of us undervalue, underestimate it. That we, we really don't understand. We just, um, you know, it's dua. Okay, let's, let's make some, uh, uh, let's make a dua. Let's make a prayer. But it's a lot deeper than this. It, it's huge. A dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua is actually, actually worship. So, you know, when we do salah, fasting, hajj, we know these to be rituals, and we know they are acts of worship that you get. We know that there's reward attached to it. Well, dua also, just like that, it's worship. It's an act of worship. Just saying, oh Allah, um, and, I, and I do this. Sometimes I go to Masjid Nabawi, okay, and it's jam-packed. And I'm looking for a parking space, right? So I get my dua mode on. I say, oh Allah, I wish if there's just one spot for me. Just one, just one. Right, and many a times I'm going, 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 and it's all full right at the end. Oh, guess what? There's a spot left for me, and that dua has been answered many a time. It's been answered, and many a time it hasn't been answered. You know, I've gone around, I've missed a salah at times. I'll be honest with you because I've had to go around two, three times. It's a bit like central London, much in we driving there, it's like Oxford Street, it's so jam packed, busy, and so a couple of I've gone round and round. 10, 15 minutes, and I've missed the salah because I've had put nowhere. Because if I park the car in a wrong way, then I could get towed away. All right. So, um, yeah, just by making that dua for looking for a parking space, that's worship. I get lots of reward for this, but it has to be done in the right way. And every um, act of worship has its conditions. They're like salah. Hamudi, let me ask you. Hamudi, can you pray salah without wudu? Come here. Uh, tell them. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No, there you are. So you can't pray without having wudu. Just like that dua, if you want, if you want to make a dua, you can make it. But if you want your dua to be accepted, there are some conditions. There are just like salah. If your salah is to be accepted, there are conditions. You have to have wudu. You have to be in a clean place. Yeah. Um, you have to be in a in a state of mind. You can't be asleep. Right. So um, there are lots of these. Uh, intricate details. So what, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at, let's say, around five things. Number one, we're going to look at what is the meaning of dua from the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, number two, we're going to look at some of the etiquettes, the manners, mannerisms, you know. What are the manners you should have when you're making dua? Hamud is, is, is writing down now. 
Um, the other one are going to be the, yeah, the accepted times. Accepted times, you know. Are there cha- times when uh, the dua has a higher chance, higher probability of being accepted? Yes, there is. Um, that one. We're going to look at some sample uh, du'as, some really, really powerful du'as, really short ones. You're going to think, hey, that's not a du'a. Well, I'll guarantee you it is. Yeah, it's so simple. Actually, every single person on this group, and I'm not reading minds right, but every single person on this group actually has memorized this du'a. Yeah, there's one du'a I'm going to tell you about. Everyone in this group knows. Even Hamoudi you knows. He doesn't know it, but he knows. He's looking at me. He's thinking, what's that talking about? All right? Um, simpler. And then we're going to look at something else. The fifth part. Fourth and fifth. We don't know how to switch it. We're going to look at the blockers. Things that actually affect or have a block on the dua reaching Allah. Remember, we have as a Muslim, we don't have this clergy type of mentality. We have to ask a... A, a, a person in intermediary to make dua for us and then they uh, send it up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a direct connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call upon Allah, I can make a dua right now. Ya Allah, forgive everyone on this group, everyone who's tuned into this broadcast, oh Allah, by the virtue of this gathering, forgive us all and everyone say ameen. And by the virtue of this gathering, oh Allah, unite us like that. We're sitting today, gathered today in a majlis, a group of remembering uh, Allah and His Prophet, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gather us on Yawm al Qiyamah like this in the gathering. We're all united together, enjoying ourselves. No need for salah, no need for sleep, no need for nothing, just eternal happiness and eternal fun. I mean, huh? so you know, we can just we have this access of dua. Did you see that? There was okay, I did my wudu just before I came onto the show. You're thinking, well, why? It's just, you know, I like even sometimes when I go on to a TV show speaking, you know, wudu, it's also beautiful. Uh, there are different hadith, the Prophet mentions some hadith that the people who are doing wudu will be uh, a little bit sparkling and shining on Yom al Qiyamah. Yeah, the ones who frequently do wudu and the ones who are frequently in a state of uh, pure purity. Okay, so it's also something good. Um, and so, you know, try uh, as good habits, okay, to be in wudu whenever you can. You don't know. When your time will be up, okay. Um, so we're gonna go right back now, rewind, it will get all higgledy piggledy. No, no, you'll be all right. I know you're focusing, mashallah. Um, and you're gonna get the uh playback anyway, but don't rely on the playback. Um, dua. So, what is it? Um, there are lots of different explanations of what it means. A dua, the two that we need to understand, very important. And that's going to help us to understand this concept of a dua is number one, it's praise, praising Allah and glorifying Allah. Yeah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illa anta. Who says this? Yunus. We'll go into this later. Rabbana dhalamna, Rabbana, our Lord. Yeah, ya razzaq. Okay, oh, the one who provides, the provider of sustenance. Okay, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We say praise be to Allah. So this part of the meaning of dua here is to praise Allah, to glorify, to magnify His Majesty, the King of Kings. Um, And you know what? SubhanAllah, this is something fascinating. Because every time we say these words of glorification, you know what happens, don't you? The angels on the right are busy writing away. Okay. Salih actually just said Alhamdulillah, praise to be to Allah And these rewards inshallah Are being stacked and cashed For the hereafter, going on your Scales on your right hand side, your good scales So your angel on the right is Very busy writing, huh? Because you're praising Allah, glorifying Allah Straight away, yeah The rewards are getting stacked For the akhirah Now, the other Meaning of dua is It's a talab in Arabic, it's a request. Talab is like, you know, when you go to a restaurant, um, you've got al-bake and you've got all these fast food restaurants. We don't want to do any free advertising anyway. Um, you go to the restaurant, you make a talab. It's like a, you make a request or, yeah, you make a request for I want. I want to order. It's not an order. Order is like more of a demand. It's a request. You know, request is more polite. It's with um, uh, that it may be 
uh, it may be accepted, it may be denied. Okay, so another, so two meanings, meaning number one, the, the bit that we need to understand is it's a glorification, it's a praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, we're magnifying, we're glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising him. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, la ilaha illallah. Yeah, subhanallah, bihamdihi, subhanallah, la ilaha La ilaha illallah, wahdahu, la sharika la, lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. It is all glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second one is a request, is, oh Allah, ya Rab, ya Razak, give me more money. Yeah, I need money. I'm not very rich. My scarf and everything probably looks, I'm alhamdulillah, no complaints, but I'm saying I could do with more money. Yeah, so ar Razak, I'm going to ask Allah, ya Razak, ya Ar-Rahman, ya Rahim, ya Razak, increase me in risk, in sustenance, in money, so I can be use it beneficially, I can give it to the poor, I can use it in that way, I can use it in good purposes. So this now is a request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I made a request just now, okay? Now, it is now up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether he will accept my request, he will decline it, when, where, how, why, all of this is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so these are the two points of... Ahmed, did you want to be in the podcast or... Or you'll be on the side. You can be on the side there. Yeah. And then you can relax. Right, we'll leave him out so he can go to sleep, whatever he wants to do. Um, right then. So everyone got that, yeah? That's important. The understanding of the meaning of dua. Okay. And it has two really important pertinent points. Okay. Um, and both, both aspects are actually rewarding okay the the second part we just, the first part we said when you glorify allah straight away you get rewards in the akhirah inshallah now the, the the requests you make oh allah give me this and that you've got um you are going to also i'm going to tell you later you're going to get lots of reward for worldly things and you'll get the reward in the akhirah but you might also get something in the dunya yeah you might also have your request fulfilled by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now so now we understand the um, uh, meaning of dua. Let me tell you a really important story. Something um, fascinating. So there was this Egyptian guy, lives in Medina. Um, Medina, I think, I forget now, subhanAllah. Um, part of Saudi Arabia. And he has been going, he works as like a janitor for a, um, a, a school or a company. And he has been going to Hajj for about 15 years in a row. So another sheikh relayed this story. It's a true story. And so they interviewed him on TV and said, look, we want to know, how come you've been going? And he has a very small nominal salary. He has a small family. Really, on his salary and his wages within living expenses, it's kind of very difficult for him to be continuously performing the Hajj every single year for 15 years in a row. Yeah, it's kind of short of a miracle. So what happens? Bismillah. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, Drink him in the right ear because of the camera. And get all upset. So they ask him, they say, okay, you've been going. Do you know, do you know how and what's going on? Where'd you get all the money from? He says, they said, do you, can you remember your first hajj? So they kind of probe him a bit. They said, well, what happened? You know, did you go on? A, what happened when you first went? He goes, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. He goes, I remember something happened. Something pretty interesting, yeah. So I remember on my first Hajj, we are, um, it's hot. Remember, 40, 50 degrees here. It's typical. He said, we're going from one of the locations, Mina Muzdalifa, um, Arafah, in the bus. Very hot, scorching day. The bus is full. He said, he's on the bus. He looks out the window. It's very slow pace. Looks out the window. And there's a lady quite, uh, she's not small, average, but slightly bigger maybe, a sister, slightly elderly, with a, a, a stick, and she's prodding along in this heat um, to the destination she wants to go to. So he thinks to himself, and he's quite young, relatively young, in his 30s, roughly, and he, he thinks, so, so I'm sitting in the coach, AC, Everything's cool and relaxing. And this is our Muslim sister, or old enough to be his mother, who is um, 
struggling so he gets off the bus and he says in good old Arab kind of fashion he says Ya Ummi oh my mother in a very respectful way oh my mother take my seat on the bus and I will walk the way he's healthy and young a bit hot bit of tiredness bit of so subhanallah she's pleasantly surprised as she is going up on the bus in, on the staircase she goes up she makes a dua she makes a dua and she says oh my son may Allah bring you for hajj every year he goes I think I, I, I think I remember this maybe the, it's that uh, old lady's dua it was a heartfelt she was remember she was in a lot of pain she was in she was in kind of a little bit of under oppression but her dua was sincere from from the bottom of her heart because she felt grateful she felt really gratitude and she was really happy and so she made a sincere dua so there's a lot of etiquette going on here okay about the etiquette and the mannerism dua so she made that dua so he thinks he says well this could be the reason the dua that lady made maybe it's that is the reason why for 15 years in a row I've been so every time you know it comes to Hajj, somehow he gets a call. This charity calls up, says, Yeah, we're looking for someone to help with the group logistics, organizing, and we got your number from so and so, and we'd like you to join. So, so okay, but it's a different ways and different. So, he's not paying every year, he just doesn't have the means. Certain scholars will choose him, sometimes his neighbor, different people. Somehow, he ends up getting chosen for Hajj, and he does. In consecutively for 15 years to power. This is the power of dua. This is the weapon. You know, this is a great uh, blessing. Um, subhanallah. So now, if we look at the mannerisms and etiquettes, there are lots of things that we overlook. And one of the key things, so there's a number of different manners uh, having etiquettes. You know, it's like the mannerisms for salah. Okay, you've got wudu. Uh, the Prophet in the hadith mentioned, you know, don't rush to salah, don't say, <laughs> I'm late, I'm late. And you go, Allah Akbar. <laughs> you know, and you're out of breath and you're like, you can't even focus on your prayer. So the Prophet said, even if you're kind of late, don't rush to the salah, go in a calm way. So when you join the salah, you're able to focus. There's khushu and there's concentration. Likewise, the mannerisms for dua, the number one, um, mannerism is of sincerity ikhlas who are you calling out to you just kind of read in a script many of us are doing that because we memorize the arabic okay hold off the script a bit think about who who are you asking from yeah and not anybody you're asking you're asking from the lord of the worlds the, the heavens um and the seven heavens, the universe, the, 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 the creator of all creation. You know, there's no shortage. And there are a number of different examples. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example. He says, if, imagine this now, you know, the seven seas and the ocean, we know the earth is full up so much water, right? He says, if, imagine a little bird goes and dips his beak and takes a bit of water from the seven seas and the oceans, all the Atlantic, all the oceans, takes a beak full of water and drinks it and goes away. Would there be any, would there be any difference in the water? Would it have reduced? Impossible to notice any difference in the reduction of the water because there are Trillions and trillions of cubic liters of water in the Atlantic Ocean, the seven seas, and all the, 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 the seas of the earth. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains, okay, in the hadith, um, Prophet Sallam tells us, Allah says, if, the, if all the people, if all the people uh, were to ask for whatever they wanted, yeah, people want cars, money, houses, <coughs> uh, palaces, everybody asked, all the people that existed asked, for whatever they wanted and Allah granted everybody everything huh? millions of pounds boats yachts women um, children if 
Allah was to grant everybody everything that they asked for, Allah's kingdom would not reduce an iota, just like that bird who dipped his beak into the oceans and took that water, made no impact. So that's how vast Allah's kingdom is, and that's how much Allah has. And that's why you should never feel, uh, feel uh, shy to ask Allah. He has so much. There's nothing to lose. And that's why you have to think about, number one, who are you asking? The Lord of the world, the King of kings. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity. And you have to have conviction. Number one in making dua, the biggest mistake is you have to, when you ask, when you make that dua, you have to have certainty that, yes, my Allah, I believe in Allah, that if it's good for me, he will grant it to me. And if he wants, he will grant it to me maybe uh, six months later, six minutes later. Right? It's up to Allah. So you have to have certainty that Allah will do justice with your dua, meaning Allah is just. He will, uh, there are a number of things that happens to your duas, okay? There are, um, what happens to your dua, we're going to look at that in a minute. Every dua that makes, there is basically three scenarios, huh? three things happen to every single dua that everybody on the planet makes, okay? All the, uh, the believers that make these duas, three, one of three things happen. Now, what are the mannerisms? So, the other mannerisms, good uh, recommended mannerisms to be in a state of purity of wudu, face the direction of qibla, um, raise your hands. There are a number of authentic ahadith, okay? Raise your hands with the palms open, not like, uh, you know, there's some people like, oh Allah, there's a hadith, and the scholars mentioned don't fold, but like a beggar, you know, you are actually a beggar. You and I are begging to Allah because we are insignificant. So we open like a beggar, open hands, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I want this. Ya Allah, please forgive me. Ya Allah, remove my mistakes. Ya Allah, remove the calamity in my life. Ya Allah, remove this uh, health issue in my life. Okay? And one of the other etiquettes is a person who does not make dua is arrogant. Because what is it showing? It's showing you're not in need of Allah. And you know what? All of us are in need of Allah. We are dependent. We are insignificant. We are, uh, we are in need. We are needy. So when we not making du'as, we think we're self-sufficient, we can manage without Allah, we can't. Okay, so we have to show to Allah that we are needy. And also, you know, if you sometimes, if you want to feel remorse and you want to ask Allah for forgiveness, if you can't cry, kind of try to fake it. Have, to, have some, you know, what do you call it? Pretend to at least humble yourself in front of Allah and to show your shyness, okay? So that's also an etiquette, is to feel that need that you are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, his love, his bounty, um, to be ikhlas, that Allah is the one we're calling out to. No one else can make anything happen. Not a leaf outside falls without Allah's permission. Okay, so no one else can grant you anything um, except by Allah's permission. Be in a state of wudu if you can, face the qibla, raise your hands. Also the other etiquettes, um, good etiquettes, and that increase your chances of your dua getting accepted, is what we said, the first part of the dua is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you say, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, La ilaha. What did Yunus alayhi salam do? Huh? When he made a mistake because he left doing the da'wah, we don't have the story time to tell. He made a mistake and what happened? He went on a boat, they drew lots, his name kept coming up. Then they threw him off the boat into the sea and he got swallowed by a big whale type of creature and he was inside this darkness for three days, three nights according to some narrations, um, lonely, scared, dark, worried. And he realized the mistake he made. And what did he do? He says, La ilaha illa anta, subhanak. He said, there is no God but Allah, subhanak. He praises Allah. So the first part of dua is, instead of going straight in, Ya Allah, I need it. Ya Allah, please forgive me. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Hold on, hold on. Start by giving the etiquettes, the majesty. Praise him. Ya, ya Rahman, Ya Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen La ilaha illa Allah wahtahu la sharika la La ilaha illa ant It's like addressing the majesty He is the king Subhanallah Alhamdulillah Allahu Akbar Okay, praise Allah ha, That's good etiquette And increases your chances of your dua getting accepted Second part is send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam This is again a great etiquette but again, this is an amazing du'a, people think. Eh? Yeah, 
This is an amazing dua. What does it ask for? You're not asking for anything here, actually. You're just sending salutations. You say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad. Huh? Sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Muhammad. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad. Huh? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna kamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna kamidun majid. So this is Dua Ibrahimiya. We're sending peace and blessings and salutations of the Prophet um, and uh, Prophet Ibrahim also, subhanAllah. Yeah, this is good etiquette. And then what happens, another part of the etiquette is look at the need you have. If you're having a lot of madness in your life in terms of um, stress, anxiety, okay, then call it, Ya Salam, Ya Salam. And I remember, subhanAllah, I went through, uh, had COVID when I was in Turkey. And I remember, you know, I couldn't sleep for days. Huh? I would barely sleep an hour or two, tossing and turning from the settee during the day to the bed. And it was painful. And I remember one night I just broke. I broke. I broke down. It was so uncomfortable. And, I, you know, I said, Allah, just, just give me one or two hours of sleep tonight, please. Allah. I broke down. And these warm tears were, you know, were flowing from my eyes. And I just started, Ya Salam, peace. Because I wasn't, I didn't have peace for days. And I would just say, I was repeating Allah's name, repeating. And I was kind of going in and out of, you know, consciousness and subconsciousness. Because of the lack of sleep, the lack of discomfort, the lack of food, the, la the, the kind of hot, the cold, the flushes. And subhanAllah, I just, Ya Salam, Ya Salam. Okay, so also to learn the names and etiquettes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Razak, if you are short of money, okay, if you need sustenance, call out to Allah with his uh, names. So these are some of the etiquettes of Salah. We're going to quickly move on to the uh, times, okay, quickly summarize some of the times. So what are the good times where your chances of dua getting accepted? Higher, you know, some of them are that um, Friday, famous one, after Asr until Maghrib, uh, between uh, Adhan and Iqama, okay, uh, between the between the Juma khutbah when the Imam sits down between the two Juma khutbas, um, what else? Lots of other ones. The traveler when you're traveling, when you're going on holiday, yeah. When you're going to New York and Florida, when you're a musafir, when you're a traveler, um, when you, um, yes. Abu Ibrahim, thank you. Zakallah khair. Breaking fast. Mine's going blank now. Breaking fast. There are lots. When you're under stress or oppression, so if you're under a lot of uh, difficulty when it's raining, Yawm al Arafa. Zakallah khair. Thank you. Um, so, lots of these times, okay, that there are times when the chances of dua being accepted are higher and more. Okay, and then we said the etiquettes, the list of etiquettes, huh? Um, and when you're generally making dua, okay, when it's outside the sal salah, is a bit tricky you can make them in sujood ah, ah, sujood don't forget sujood um ruku yes tahajjud absolutely the last third of the night even if it means half an hour before fajr we know the hadith subhanallah we have to mention this okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down to the lowest heavens and he's waiting he's saying where's my lord uh, where are my slaves if they want something i'm ready to give it to them and you know, when you raise your hands, look at the beauty and love Allah has for us. SubhanAllah. He is, you know, when we raise our hands and we want something, Allah feels shy to return us empty handed. Yes, when you're under sickness, and when you're stressed out big time. Yeah, Allah feels, Allah feels shy to return us. So when we ask yeah, for something, inshallah, Allah's not going to let us down. Yeah, he feels shy to let us go empty-handed um maybe a point of uh, a note where some people again it's not really authentic some people they wipe their face some scholars say it's okay but really from what i've read it's not authentic um there is no really concrete evidence that you should wipe your face so you raise them facing like this and then raise them back and after the fart salah can you make dua with raising your hands some say no it's better yes you can okay it's not an issue um, i asked one of my uh, school teachers here in medina um, so alhamdulillah so raising hands again there are a number of hadith it's a good etiquette now um so those are the times now what happens uh we're nearly done 
Um, we're going to give sample du'as in a minute. Um, yes. What about things that are going to affect um, a parent's du'a for their child? Yes, Barakallah Fiq. Now let's go through. Um, what should we do? The three, then the, the yeah. What are the, the, okay, so let's go through this actually, and then we'll give some sample du'as. Uh, what happens to your du'as? Every single du'a that you make, there are pretty much three predicaments. What's going to happen? Number one, you make a du'a. Okay, for example, when I'm driving up Masjid Nabawi and nothing there, and I say, Ya Allah, let me find it. And what happens? I ask, I want that parking space, and within moment, within minutes, I get it. So the du'a that I made, whatever I asked, whatever I requested, the talab I made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was answered. So basically, whatever I ask for, I got. It might, in many cases, it's immediate. It might be a little bit delayed. It depends on Allah's wisdom on when it's the right time for me. In many cases, it will be you ask for something and you get it. Okay, you get whatever you ask for. As long as a condition, again, there are conditions that it's halal and that you're not hasty. So there's a hadith. Um, the companions, uh, the Prophet said, your du'as will be accepted. Allah will not return you empty-handed unless you are asking for haram, unless you are hasty. So the companions want to, what, what does hasty mean? The Prophet explains. He says, hasty means you make du'a. Let's say you make du'a for something every single day for a month. And you see nothing happens. And on the beginning of the second month, you say, oh, I'm going to, oh, what a waste of time. I've been making du'a for a whole month. Nothing happened. SubhanAllah, this is bad. Yeah, because now you are kind of saying, well, you're demanding from Allah what well, I've made for a whole month. Every day I made it three times a du'a. Three times, three has 90. You know, 100 du'as. Oh Allah, well, what happened? Allah is the one who decides when it will be answered, if it will be answered. So, um, so the number one, you ask something, you get it. Whatever you ask for, you get it. Number two, you ask for something. For example, um, it may be the case that you went for a job interview. Okay, you were the best candidate. You did the interview, everything. And you prayed istikhara, you, you went for you tahajjud, you did khatam Quran, you did so much preparing, right? Two months. And you get a call, dear Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed, unfortunately, you didn't get the job. You're thinking, oh my goodness, what happened here? What happened here? You, you, you ace the interview. Anyway, so what happened was you ask for something. And then what happens a month later, then another job comes up and it's a higher salary, closer to home, less work. You do the same preps again and Allah gives it to you. Alhamdulillah. So what's happened here is that you made a dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually what happened was that he didn't answer your dua. He actually gave you something even better. He upgraded it for you. Okay. He upgraded it. So you get a free upgrade and you got something better than what you asked for because what you asked for was harmful for you was potentially harmful. Maybe that job you're going to mix with people, you're going to go to wrong places, you're going to miss your salah. Okay, so sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove calamities out the way for you by the virtue of dua. Maybe a disaster would have befall you and Allah moves the calamity away by the virtue of your dua or he upgrades it because he has the knowledge. He knows what's better for you. This He knows, yeah, it's a free upgrade to first class, right? That um, without paying anything, okay? Because Allah knows that this thing is harmful. He's going to give you something better. So you're already winning. First one, you got what you asked for. Second one, either you, you've got a calamity removed by the virtue of your dua, something that was going to befall you, or you get a free upgrade. You get something even better than what you asked for. Right? And number three, this is the most mind-blowing one. I'm not going to tell you, actually. I'll tell you at the end. Yaqeen? No. What happens is that the third one is, is really amazing. Before we get to the third one, let me tell you a, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, come on, I'll tell you now. It's better. Um, the third one is subhanAllah. So you make dua, okay, and you make dua, and you make dua, and you make dua, and it's been years, and you're continuously making the dua, and you're never losing hope. You get it then, Abu uh, Ibrahim? Yes, wait, let me tell you. So, so subhanAllah, what happens? On Yom al Qiyamah, people are waiting for their judgment, waiting around. People are looking around. One person spots massive, massive mountains and mountains and piles of good deeds. They're looking around. 
one person thinks, oh, I wonder who, this is reported, I'm paraphrasing, but reported by Imam Ahmed, okay, and the hadith. So one person looks at these rooms and thinks, wow, what a special person. They must be worshipping Allah day and night. They must be doing so many good things, maybe Quran, Salah. They must be a big person in the eyes of Allah. So they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, who do these good deeds belong to? Allah responds back, those? They're yours. What? Yeah, they're yours. That person thinks to themselves, nah, something's going on here. It must be a mistake. I barely did my salah. I did a bit of Quran. How could I? Then he asks Allah, oh Allah, okay, what did I do? How did I get these mountains and mountains? Allah explains, oh my servant, you remember? The du'as that you made in the dunya? That I didn't answer? I didn't answer, but you know what? Because the du'as you made, the certainty you had, the love you had, and the praise you have for me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've now saved the reward for you. It's stacked up. So you've got everything now here. And this person thinks to themselves, Oh, I wish all of my du'as were never answered in the dunya. I didn't need them in there. I need them now. And this is, look. So look at the beauty of du'a. With these three scenarios, team, team dad and sons, who in the right mind from today would never, would not make du'as? I'm urging you, just make a du'a, you know, sincerely. Number one, you win. Number two, you win. Number three, you win. Where's the loser? The loser is the one who doesn't make the dua. That's the loser. The one who makes the dua with ikhlas, with the conditions we mentioned. Win, win, win. So let me go through a few quick duas. When we said one of the lots of standard duas, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, Rabbana dhualamna anfusana, Dua of Yunus, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. Um, I'm going to give you some really easy one. Big powerful one. I said that every single one of you on, on this group knows this dua. I'm not going to tell you until I tell you the story. So, okay, back, back in the uh, olden times, generations ago, there was a scholar and he's sitting in the gathering and Three sets of people come. A person comes and asks the sheikh, he says, Yeah, sheikh, we have been suffering from a drought in our village. We really are suffering. What do you advise us to do? What do you recommend? He's a big scholar of the time. So he says to the man, Do istighfar. Okay, guy thinks, oh, istighfar, that's it. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Moves aside. Next person comes. The next person comes. The next person comes and says, oh, Sheikh, we, we are really poor. We're struggling with our finances. We are really in poverty-stricken situation. Our family, our condition is really bad. The Sheikh says, do istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. So all the students of the Sheikh thinking, okay, what's going on here? Interesting. A third person comes. And he says, oh, Sheikh, we have, we've been trying to, for children. We have, we don't have any children. We make it, but we're doing lots of things. We're trying our best. What does the chef reply? He says, do istighfar. So then the students, so these people are gone. The, 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 they're still there. One of the students, the curious student, they said, chef, all these people came with different scenarios, different problems. And you just dished out one, one word answer, just a little blanket. Astaghfirullah, where are you getting this from? What's going down? He goes, well, 
I don't make anything up. I'm only giving what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nuh, 71 chapter verse, I think it's 10, 11, and 12. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, call your Lord, ask forgiveness from your Lord, istighfar, do astaghfirullah, and Allah will grant you rain, he will grant you wealth, and he will grant you children. That's what the Sheikh was doing. He was taking the Quranic advice and telling it to these people. Subhanallah. So this is the powerful ace card, ace du'a. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Whenever you have spare time. Um, and somebody else said to me, that they said, look, I'm, 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 I'm saying this, but it's not. I said, look, when you say it, don't just mean it. And what does it mean? Istighfar, astaghfirullah. Asking, look at your shortcomings, all your mistakes, all the haram that you've been seeing, touching, saying, hearing, backbiting. It's become like second nature. Ask Allah sincerely, astaghfirullah. And who are you asking to? The Lord of the heavens and the earth. With ikhlas, with remorse, with regret, yeah, with humbleness, with humility. So that's your ace card, dua, astaghfirullah. Ace number two is Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad. And we know the virtues of salutations sending upon the Prophet Sallallahu once, uh, you know, peace and blessings, and the angels send it to us upon us ten times. SubhanAllah, what an honor. We send it one to the Prophet Sallallahu and you can be anywhere, by the way, you guys can send it now. You don't need me to send it to the Prophet Sallallahu to Medina. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad. Huh? You can say it from wherever you are, and the angels will take this salawat and send it to Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu responds, SubhanAllah. Okay? So, there's no dua involved in this, but there is. The scholars explain that by the virtue of sending salutations and blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu And remember, Allah Subhanahu wa knows what is in our hearts, knows what my needs are, knows what Ilyas's needs are, knows what Fires his needs are, knows what his kinder's needs are, what his problems are, what his faults are. Yeah, so by the virtue of doing, same with istighfar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. By the virtue of asking for forgiveness, by making yourself little, humble, needy in front of Allah, Allah starts granting some of your du'as, the hidden, your needs that you have. Same with the salawat, when you send salutation to the Prophet, system, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts answering your needs in your life yeah the things that you wanted to utter it's also good to utter it but salawat in abundance is like powerful it's another ace card okay so those are two powerful to us and the third one hold on i bet you didn't know these two are du'as did you how many of you knew that those were du'as You just thought it's is Azkar, isn't it? Azkar. These are powerful du'as. And the third one, another one we all under, underestimate. Big du'a. Al-Fatiha. And the Turks are big on this. They've gone a bit too extreme. You know, they said, Al-Fatiha, after like a bayan sermon gathering, Al-Fatiha. One guy shouts it, and everyone is. I mean. You say, I mean, it's a dua. <laughs> That's the mother of, this is also a big dua, Surah Al-Fatiha. And it's the, the, the summary of the whole Quran in the seven or eight verses, right, depending on um, how it's classed. Now, the seven verses, let's say, of Al-Fatiha is a great dua. It's, of course, a summary of the Quran, but it's an amazing dua okay, to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. So powerful, it has everything in there, everything that you want. Starts, look at this how it starts. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the Lords. So, that also itself is a power, powerful ace card dua, Surah Al Fatiha. So, these are your three aces for today. Um, the last thing we're going to mention is the blockers of dua. I think we touched up on it. So what kind of things 
going to stop our du'a reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We mentioned something about haram, right? Can't ask for haram things. Oh Allah, I want to watch uh, 10 episodes of Netflix, please. And let me, give me lots of money so I can buy Netflix. Stuff will know. Okay? Um, haram things you can't ask for. And the other one is being hasty, giving up hopes. They are made of fed up, getting fed up of making the du'a. And the bigger one really you need to think about is um, there's a man. Okay, the Prophet it's mentioned in different hadith. There's a man, he's traveling. Okay, so he's a traveler. So his chances of being, uh, being uh, du'a accepted. He is uh, stressed and disheveled because he's had a long, tireless journey. He, is, he puts his hands up. And he makes the dua to Allah and he calls also by Allah's names. Okay, so he's got all these etiquettes, the good conditions, you know, the ones that are increasing his chance of being dua. And the Prophet, he makes the duas, and the Prophet said, all his duas are rejected. And the hadith continues, so I'm giving kind of a synopsis and a summary, that the man's clothes are haram, the man's drink was haram, his food's haram. How come? How come? Because it's to do with his income. His earnings are unlawful. He's been earning his sustenance in a haram way. So the clothes he bought are haram. The food he's been drinking is haram. The, the food. Drink he's been drinking and the food he's been eating. SubhanAllah. So one of the key blockers of dua. You might think, well, why is my du'as not being accepted and answered? Why am I struggling? Look at your, how you're earning your money. Okay, and the other things we mentioned about ikhlas, having yaqeen, not to be hasty, not to get, uh, be sincere, not to be hasty on those things. But the biggest one is make sure your risk, your sustenance is halal because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran many a times, Allah and the hadith mentions also, Allah is pure and loves things that are pure. Um, eat from the pure things. Okay, so if you're also if you're eating um, haram food, okay, then this is going to affect you are what you eat, and it's going to affect your spirituality, your du'as, and that's why many of the scholars are very cautious in these day and age eating meat products because a lot of the chicken has hormones, a lot of the meat has a lot of issues. Okay, very important to have halal food, pure food, halal earnings and sustenance. Okay, alhamdulillah. That's it, I can hear uh, Muhammad, he's fallen asleep. 11 o'clock, we'll let him off. All right, so to summarize, what do we look at? We looked at five different areas, just a couple of minutes, and then if there's questions, maybe. You can ask your questions. I might not answer any of them, but anyway. <laughs> um, number one, we looked at du'a. What is du'a? We said there are two meanings to du'a. The important one being praise. It's a glorification or praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second meaning to du'a. Uh, the second part important is that it's a talab, it's a request. We're asking Allah uh, for things that we need because we are needy. Uh, then we looked at some of the mannerisms of du'a. Um, uh, facing the Qibla These are recommended um, You don't have to be in state of wudu The different times uh, By asking Allah by his names By praising him at the beginning Raising your hand Sending salutations and peace and blessings Upon the Prophet wasallam. Okay, the mannerisms Then we mentioned um, a few of uh, Du'as Power ace cards Istighfar, just do astaghfirullah all the time when you're around, when you're in a bank queue, when you're driving, yeah, when you're wherever you are. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Keep your tongue moist, okay? Uh, sending salutations, this is another ace. And the third ace, we said is Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah, and everybody who prays knows this Al-Fatiha. And uh, people who don't even pray know uh, astaghfirullah, I have to say that, yeah? And Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad, everybody also, almost everybody knows that as well unless they're a new Muslim or something. Um, so those are the uh, ace cards. And then we, we mentioned uh, towards the end regarding the blockers of dua. 
not being sincere and asking Allah, not having conviction that he will answer it, uh, being hasty and haram food and haram income. Okay, all of these uh, reduces the chances of your dua being accepted, just like other moments and times that increase your chances of du'as being accepted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for the virtue of this majlis. Um, anything good I have said is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any mistakes, shortcomings, uh, any errors are from myself or the whisper of the mm -hmm. shaitan. May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. Uh, everybody on this group, may Allah bless you. Uh, may Allah count this every second uh, towards this on our good scale of deeds. And let us not forget this weapon, this dua. Okay, dua, win, win, win. Only, there you are, he's, he's asleep. You are, right, Hamoudi? He's fast asleep. Hamoudi, um, look, there you are. He's going to be on the um, podcast. <laughs> when he wakes up, he's not going to like it. Right, stay there. Um, all right, so أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you all and reunite us in Firdaus al Aala by the the virtue of this gathering. Inshallah, I'll hand it over to our hosts. They usually make du'as. I don't know what they're going to do and questions and things like that. Have I gone over time? I don't know. I don't care really. Um, really good reminder, Alhamdulillah. Obviously, Hamoud is going to sleep, so I'm, 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 we're, we're aware of your time there. It's about eleven o'clock now, isn't it? Um, no, he's fine. He's 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 enjoying himself. He's 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 <laughs> I'm sure he's uh, making some du'as subconsciously, maybe some way. No, he's I've taken. Let me show you his notes. Hold on, Marshall, he's a good boy. He, he's born and bred in Medina, by the way, and he yeah. has making some notes. Look, just see that he. he that's of course when he was awake, and now he's obviously making uh, subconscious notes in his sixth sense, whatever it is. But he has made some, alhamdulillah, some notes. Um, yeah. yeah, mashallah, blockers and all. Yeah, he's, he's done good. I'm proud of him. He's, he's put the contents, the first four sections. Um, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless him and keep him uh, as a righteous child, like all of our children, inshallah. I mean, um, okay, go ahead. Um, yeah. well, we've got uh, just a couple of questions. Um, one was asked very at the very start of the uh, session. Uh, somebody saying, "How can we, as parents, continue our du'a for the straight path with regards to our children when we see all the diversions tempting our children away?" Okay, good, good. Um, two things then. The other, oh gosh, the other ace card, I forgot to mention actually, the ace, fourth ace, there's loads of aces, right? The fourth ace is actually the mums and dads du'as, okay? Um, and the fifth ace actually will be the, the child's du'a um, when we pass away, you know, because that's sadaqah jariya, we know from the hadith, authentic hadith, a du'a that a child makes while the parents are deceased in their grave is very powerful and will help them. Now, while the parents are alive, the parents have the ace cards. SubhanAllah, their du'as, okay, can actually make or break a child. A du'a of uh, the parent can turn that child's life in this dunya hell and the akhirah hell, I'm telling you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so many times mentions, you know, worship me and be good to your parents. You know, you have this day and age to the children uh, shouting back, swearing, Raising their hands to the parent. Allah says, Oof. don't even say oof to your parent. And that itself is major sin. Okay, that's a whole lecture in itself. But so the parents, okay, you have an amazing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you an amazing card. Continuously make dua for them, okay, and try not to make dua against them because you could destroy them. I know they annoy us at times, even me. I get very, I have six children, by the way, from 18 until seven. So I know exactly, mix of boys and girls. I know what's going on, right? Always stay calm and make good du'as. Okay, now, two things. You said, okay, it's, it's difficult. There's so many fit and destruction. Well, the hadith where the man um, came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, oh, Prophet Sallallahu shall I just um, leave my camel and put my trust in Allah that Allah's going to keep it safe? Or shall I tie the camel 
and then put my trust in Allah. Yeah, or leave the camel loose and it could run away. No, the Prophet said, tie the camel and put your tawakkal, your trust in Allah, that Allah will protect the, your camel. So you've got to take the means. Yeah, you've got to, alhamdulillah, um, you've got to do your part. You've got to make dua, but dua is just not enough, guys. Come on, it's not going to miraculously turn your, turn your child into angelic. No, you've got to educate them. You've got to send them, remind them to send to Islamic classes. You've got to remind them to, for prayer. You've got to remind them for Quran. You've got to remind them, check on their friends, see which friends they have, good, bad, or ugly. See what they're reading. Yeah, most of you probably don't even, most of us, a lot of us are ignorant, don't even know what they're watching. Yeah, anime and this and Netflix. Be involved in your child's life. Know who they're hanging out with. So you've got to do your part. We've got to do our part. It's not easy. I know, very difficult. They're very moody, difficult. Um, the, the internet age, mobile phones. SubhanAllah, it's, it's one of the most toughest jobs. Uh, being a parent, yeah, I know. I'm telling you from first-hand experience. So do take the practical steps, you know, find good friendship for them, spend time with them, take them out for coffee, the teens and stuff, you know, spend one-to-one -one quality time. If you have a few children, this is a tip, take them out one-to-one. -one. Say, okay, we'll, we'll go for a coffee, go for an ice cream, get them to open up. Because we don't have this. Dad comes You know, like a mouse in front of your dad. Okay, we know you should have that respect, but at the same time, you should be able to talk with your dad about the problem. You should have this friendship. You know, there was a question on one of my sessions yesterday, actually, yeah, teens, um, youth classes. I said, can your mother be a, your friend? Some people said no. Other people said yes. But your mother, for the daughters, uh, should be your best friend. You should be able to joke with her. You should be able to, you know, chill out with her. You should, at the same time, you need to respect and know the boundaries, but she should be a friend to you. And the boys, dads and sons, see how Moody is all right, he's gone to sleep, um, should have a good relationship with um, our sons, okay? Easier said than done, but may Allah Panther make it easy for us, okay? So we've got to take the practical steps, okay? No point in just making dua and then miraculously or sending them to Islamic school and thinking they're going to come out as uh, imams and scholars, no. You've got to do, we've got to do our part. Okay, if you're trying our best, if we're taking the precautions, we're blocking avenues, you just let them go wherever they want, you know, go with whoever their friends are, whenever they want, they're coming at one in the morning. No, no, it's not going to work. You let them use foul language, you let them smoke. Come on. Okay, we've got to take ownership. We've got to take responsibility. We've got to be involved in the parenting. Dads especially, and for this podcast, right, it's not just the mom's job to raise children, right? That's nonsense. Yeah, it's both mom and dads. Many dads are elusive and they escape and they think it's the mom who brings up the children. It's both. All right, dad's podcast. Hope that helps, okay? Make the good du'as, positive du'as, but also take the action. Do what you can right, in the community. Zakallah khair. And then... Um... I think there's one more that has been asked is how do you achieve for sure when you're making dua? Because all too often you've got other things happening in your mind, in your life that you, um, when you start, you easily become distracted. So very similar mm -hmm. to the kids being distracted through many different things happening around them. Likewise for maybe the adults as well. How do you gain that ability to just block everything away and concentrate on the words that you are using with Allah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, because you know, sometimes after the salah, you read the fard salah, it gets them um, busy and you have to run off. You might have work, you might have a meeting, you might have, I don't know, guests coming. Um, what can we do? A couple of things. And a lot of people, what they do, you know, after the Fad Salah, spend a bit of time. You know, some people with the Asian kind of habit, they, they shoot up to do the Sunan. Okay, again, that's a kind of an Asian thing. With the Arabs, they don't do that. After the Fad Salah, you have a master break. You do some istighfar, you know, you do the astaghfirullah, you do the adhkar. And then maybe you should, like I said, look, some people, they say, don't raise your hands. You can, it's not an issue. You can raise your hands or you don't have to. But... 
go through at that time, make a dua, make some duas. Um, but just again, to warm up to your duas, you have to kind of do stuff for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just trying to empty your mind out a bit. Okay. If salah, maybe, look, it's busy and after salah, before salah, it might, it might not be the time, okay? Yeah, then choose a different time. I think better is when you're in a, alone, okay, maybe in the morning or at night time, no one's there because du'a is you and Allah, you and the king, right? So if it helps, just by yourself, close your door for a few minutes, five minutes, raise your hands, make a du'a. Then you don't need to have wudu. Remember, don't make it difficult for yourself. If you don't know which way qibla is, you should make qibla, right? But again, wudu can't be a hardship. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about wudu. Forget it. Just raise your hands and make the du'a. Yeah? Just relax, humble yourself, take a few minutes, maybe take a few deep breaths, breathing kind of helps. And then um, do a stuff for you know, just like stuff for Allah, stuff for Allah. We're not saying go in this Sufi trance, you know, and start whirling and doing all these things. You know? <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm saying is do some car just to calm and, you know, just to get rid of your thoughts for possibly, yeah, because the mind's racing. Um, and that's why maybe a little bit at night, maybe also a good time is before you go to sleep. Yeah, because that's also a good time to check your checks and balances, you know. So, well, what did I do today? What are the things I'm proud of today? And what are the things I'm not so proud of? Yeah, and after that, make a dua. Another time I'll tell you a good time to make dua also is when you do a good deed. So, you know, when you want to make a give a sadaqah, maybe give when you find someone who go to the masjid and you give a bit of money. Okay, once you've got that money, make a dua because there's also that habit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it was to do with them. There's the hadith about the three people in the cave and when they were blocked and they were making dua and they were reminding Allah by the virtues of their good deeds. So they said, oh Allah, I did so and so. Ya Allah, make an opening for us in the cave. And so the stone moves a little bit. The second guy goes, he, he has, um, he says also, oh, I did this, Allah, please, can you um, save us from this cave? So another bit opens and a third person, yeah? So the, what did they mention here? They, they mention, they make a dua and they remind Allah of the kind of the good deeds they've done. So likewise, when you give sadaqah, you've done a good deed, after that, make a dua. Okay, so when you've done a good deed, make a dua, follow it up. SubhanAllah, I think somebody's, yeah, okay, mashallah, we'll take a, make a note of that. Um, sorry, guys, somebody has, uh, right. Uh, okay, so that is very important in terms of, what was the question we were answering? About khushu. Yes, concentration, concentration in du'a. Jazakallah khair. Um, I'm going to ask one more question because I know it's getting late because uh, people have got, uh, kids have got school tomorrow. Um, one brother's asking on here through a direct message to me saying, Is it recommended to perform a congregational du'a with kids to encourage them, uh, and particularly in English in this country, so that they understand? Excellent question. Um, I will answer to that. Yeah, okay. So, look, there are we've got to be a little bit cautious in the sense that, um, straight after the fard salat there are some people what they do the imam raises his hand and everybody the whole mosque makes a dua and every single salat time they do it every every time this is not from the sunnah this is not what the prophet says and the companions did okay so we don't do that but on the uh, opposite note um let's say you're at home okay you prayed as a family um and then you everyone raises their hands together and make a dua. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. What we used to do in our, um, our as a family is the children, and yes, du'as you can make. Remember, outside of salah, you can make it in whatever language you feel like. Urdu, Portuguese, Turkish, right? So, what I used to do is, I may start with the du'a, one in Arabic, one in English, or Allah, this, that. Then ask my children, I go around one by one, and I ask them to make du'a in English. I say, right, Hamadi, you, Muhammad, you ask whatever you want to ask. 
Who are you going to ask for? And I say, Fatima, you ask now. Yeah, so, and then everybody's saying, I mean, okay. This is a good one because it allows them to understand the importance of du'a, um, importance of family, that there's nothing, there's no haraj in this. Um, but again, they need to understand that this is not fard, then this should be done every salah time. Do it, you know, after some salah, some days don't do it. Break it up so they know that this is just a optional act. Also, that once you have a gathering, maybe you've just eaten um, your food. Okay, we know there's a du'a for food. Alhamdulillah. You might just, um, you know, when you go to someone's house and you've had food, uh, one person can raise their hand and just make du'a to thank thank Allah for the blessings. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So there's nothing wrong with that. There's only these extreme people that start kind of getting all this madness. You know, uh, some people saying that even that you can't raise your hands. Forget all these extremes. We stay what's in the middle, what's authentic from the Quran, Sunnah. You can uh, as, a, as a group, okay, but again, people need to realize this is not compulsory and you don't kind of make it a habit so it becomes regular. So the student chart, like uh, they think that this is part of some people in the Asian subcontinent, you know what happens? After the Fard Salah, if you don't make a dua loud in the congregation, they think your Salah is not complete. The nonsense. They think this dua is part of the Salah. So you see how it's gone wrong. But as a family, if everyone, like I said, it's a good habit for the parents, huh? get everyone to make a little dua, you know, and it allows them to, and you see in their mind, you know, it's a bit of a psychological thing. You see what they ask for. Their innocence comes out and they said, oh, oh, grant my dad something. Oh, can we be in Jannah as a family? I want a house of jelly in Jannah. You know, they're cute. They're innocent. They will give. Okay, and sometimes they say, get, encourage them to say it loud. And if they don't want to, then get them to say it quietly. Yeah, because it's supposed to be between them and Allah. Okay, so it's a nice way of uh, bringing the family together in the essence of du'a and also in another language, no problem at all. And Allah knows best. Um, we've taken a lot of your time, your precious time. Um, but it was great to have you on here. And inshallah, we're able to get you back on here because, um, uh, mashallah, we've had a, a good number of engagements uh, on here. We've had about 50 profiles but a lot more people behind it so it's a very important topic and you've you've touched upon it really well alhamdulillah there are other questions of course but unfortunately we don't have the time uh, we may need to get you back on inshallah that's a way of hooking you back uh to to answer those questions and to to talk about uh, another topic inshallah um but before you go with everyone uh, as i said to you keep an eye out on the chat uh, on the whatsapp um we will be posting next week's talk inshallah in due course, once that, that is all sorted out. Uh, if you've got any questions, then Kyla, the part of the, uh, on the chat groups, you can ask us directly about things that you want to us to discuss, to to particular speakers you want us to try and get on board. Inshallah, we'll do our best to, to do that. Um, but uh, after, uh, now that's done, alhamdulillah, the, the session has come to an end. The stat's going to ask you to uh, finish the session with a, a closing dialogue. Okay, um, yeah, just before I make the dua, I want to say actually is really, time has been very short. I haven't done justice to the topic. You know, I could, I usually spend hours on this, um, going into a lot more detail. But inshallah, I was giving you kind of a, a, a summary uh, of most of the important topics. Um, we need to spend more time on this. Okay, it's a very important topic. So we, we make dua, inshallah, Allahumma ameen, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adhab al-nar, wa qina adhab al-qabr, wa qina adhab al-hashar, wa qina adhab al-mizan. Rabbana zalamna anfusana, wa illam taghfir lana, wa tarhamna, lana kunanna min al-khasirin. Rabbi rhamhuma, kama rabbiyani saghira, la ilaha illa anta subhana, ka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملت ولا الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعف أننا وعف أننا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصنا على القوم الكافرين وصل الله ما وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة Bye. Bye.